is Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Centered Ministry, where our focus is centered on the harvest of the world. And where we can't go by air, we go by prayer. We hear a lot of good messages, but is there a word from the Lord? I got good news for you, my friend. There is a word from the Lord. So stay tuned. Play close attention as we prepare now to go into the world. With their little ones. See, everybody has to come together on one accord. In this season, we getting in, everybody got to get together on one accord. They had enough sense to know they got everybody, the children and all. Huh? Amen. We're going to have to follow these instructions from now on. We're going to have to follow these patterns. We got to pay more attention to these young people than we've been paying attention to them, to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. But he says, he says here in verse 13 again, that all Judah stood before the Lord. I mean, the children were standing before the Lord, too. Huh? That means the children were present in the midst of this prayer. They were going to participate even in this fast. Come on now. Amen. So that we got to begin to put the whole house on the fast. When they were going to fast in the Old Testament, they wouldn't even let the animals eat. Amen. To the glory of God. Somebody said, well, we got some catching up to do. <laughs> yeah, I know it's Old Testament, what this all, but it's inspired. All scripture is given for inspiration. Amen. So we can learn from this. We can get instructions from this on today. We can be taught from this. This is giving us information how we can really get some real answers from God, how we can really get some real victories from God. But like I keep telling y'all, we can't be lazy. We got to be consistent in this thing. We got to be disciplined in this thing. You got to be hungry for whatever it is that you want from God, that whatever it takes for me to get that thing. If I got to give some up, I give it up. If I got to give some people up, I give them up. If I got to let that job go, I let it go. Amen. But I got to get what I need from God. See, people don't like when you talk like that. <laughs> Amen. Because that's what it, when you really start to follow God, you understand that he's going to require Require you to forsake some things. He's going to require you to have to change company. Amen. To the glory of God. That's why Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, if you're not willing to take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy to be my disciple. Basically, he was saying, if you're not worthy to die. Huh? If you're not willing to die, if you're not willing to suffer, if you're not willing to be ridiculed, you're not willing to go through persecution, if you're not willing to be in shameful situation, if you're not willing to be denied by your company, amen, you're not worthy to be my disciple. He said, if you don't love, if you love your mother, if you love your father, love your wife, love your children more than me, you're not worthy to be my disciple. See, we don't got many disciples right now. We don't have many disciples in this day and time. We got many so-called Christians, but we don't have true disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. These are true disciples that are sitting in here right now because y'all are willing to give your body, present your body. This is what a type of presenting your body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord because you could be in a comfortable place right now. You could be waiting for this to come on tomorrow. Amen. But you thought it not robbery to bring yourself here to church and get in the presence of the saints because now we're finding out it's going to take all of us. Amen. We're finding out it's going to take all of us in this season that we're going into. But he says in verse 14, then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jehaziel. G-I-L, amen, G-I-L, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asa, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. See that? Look at that now. The spirit of the Lord came on somebody in the midst of the congregation. Who's to say what's going to happen on tonight in the midst of the congregation? If we'll get out of our head and get into our spirit. We'll get out of our flesh and get into the spirit on tonight. Because I'm a firm believer. You preach something, it will happen. Whatever we're preaching about, the anointing of that thing is present in the house at that time. And a lot of people week in, week out, they miss an anointing. They could have got their miracle from because whatever I'm preaching about is present at that time in Jesus name but he says here in verse number 15 he said hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou king Jehoshaphat thus saith the Lord unto you 
Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God. Amen. This is God. That means God, God set this thing up. Amen. Then God had this thing already set. I don't know what you're going through right now. Could you ever think that God may have had this thing set up for the glory, for his own glory, because he wanted to get some glory? He has set some things up, allowed some things to be set up in your life. Just for he can get the glory. That's what we miss it at. We don't want God to get the glory. We're in a place where we want some glory. But if we ever want to step behind that curtain like we're supposed to, God will take you where he's been wanting to take you. But you got to get your focus back and let it be all for his glory. Somebody say, God wants the glory. God got to get the glory. The world can't get saved off of you. Amen. They got to see the glory of God. For things to change, it takes the glory of God, not the glory of you. And that's the problem right now why we don't see God moving in our service he won't see God moving in the midst of us right now because we made this thing all about us but it's supposed to be all about him and therefore since it's supposed to be all about him sometimes he'll set some things up on his own and show you that you're gonna need him Amen. Because I don't know, some of us have got too grown. We don't think we need God anymore. What in the world has got wrong with some of us? God will put you in a situation and make you have to cry out to him. That's why I never pray God humble me. I humble myself <laughs> because I know my God. My God, okay, you want to be humble? I'll put you in a situation where you got to be. Amen. So I just learn God. So you got to learn God. You got to get into the scriptures. Amen. You got to get into the word for you to know who you're serving. You'll know his personality. You'll know his characteristics. You'll know who he is. Amen. Does anybody want to know who he is? But it says in verse number 16 to tomorrow he said go ye down against them. Somebody say instruction. Behold they come up by the cliff of Ziz and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Jeruel Verse 17 says, and ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Y'all see that? He said, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. But what does he tell you? Even though they don't need to fight yet and still, they have instruction. Huh? He said they, they don't need to fight, but yet they still have some instruction. He said, ye need not fight in this battle. But he says here, he says, set yourselves. Somebody say, set yourselves. Stand still, huh? Stand ye still. Say it, say, stand ye still. Uh huh. And he said here, he said, and see what? The salvation of the Lord. Now, when you get into the Hebrew now, the, the, when I gave you uh, the definition of salvation when we were in the New Testament, that was Greek, right? So now, where we are, we're in the Old Testament. So we're going to give it to you in Hebrew. Amen. So salvation means something saved. Somebody say something saved. It means deliverance. It means aid. It means victory. It means prosperity. And then also that, that salvation is Yeshua. Somebody say Yeshua. Who is Yeshua? Amen. That's what it is. In Hebrew, it's Yeshua. Salvation is Yeshua to the glory of God. So he says, stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. Huh? With, somebody say, with me. With me. Amen. He says, oh, Judah. He said, oh, Judah in Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed tomorrow. Go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. In verse 18, he said, And Jehoshaphat bowed his, he his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord. What were they doing? Worshiping the Lord. He said all. And we found out the all was also included what? The children. Amen. So children, y'all going to have to come up. Amen. In this next year, y'all going to have to get y'all a real relationship with God so we can focus on the Lord. It's going to take all of us. I look at little Michael. Come on, give Michael a hand right now. He's paying attention to me, to the glory of God. That for those of you who are watching us, one of the young people gave me a little nod like he's going to pay attention for the rest of next year. Amen. <laughs> Come on, give the young people another hand right now because we're going to be including these young people. These are the future of the church that we're in right now. We're not, look, at, look at us. Look at us that are of age right now. We're not getting no younger. 
Huh? Amen. Who you think going to carry on this thing? That's why we got to make sure they get the right foundation to the glory of God. But verse 18 again saying, Jehoshaphat bowed, bowed, bowed his head with his face to the ground. And I love that because this is a king. You see that? This is a king. He's bowing his head with his face to the ground in front of all Judah. Huh? You know they're in the tight place. Everybody's humbling themselves before the Lord. It's good for us, Pastor, to let the people see us get on our knees. Amen. They're to see us praying. Pray along with the people, you know. Ah, glory to God. Can't wait till we be able to advance into our own building. We have a prayer service, and I'm going to be in those prayer services myself. Amen. I ain't going to just have you in the prayer. I'm going to be in the prayer service. I'm going to be leading the prayer service to the glory of God. But he says, and Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Korahites and the children of Korahites stood up what? Say it louder. Y'all help me preach. They stood, they stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel. Somebody say with a loud voice. What well, well, we're receiving instructions on tonight. So tonight, I expect you to have a loud voice. Sunday morning, I expect you to have a loud voice. Because there's something that's getting ready to happen because of their voices. You don't know, there's something powerful about our voices. That's why the devil trying to keep you to keep your mouth shut. Because if you open up your mouth, things begin to move in the realm of the spirit. That's why he don't want you to open up your mouth. But it says that it stood, you see the core, it says stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a, that's in there for a reason, with a loud voice on high. Verse number 20, and they rose early in the morning. Somebody say early in the morning. Mm -hmm. And went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets and I and I and I circle put a red circle. I don't know when I did that, but I but I put emphasis on I circle his because there's many people out there with the title of, of calling themselves prophets. But the key thing, his prophets, Amen. So the key thing is his prophets. Let's say, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. You don't understand when I stand before you preaching the word of God. I stand as your prophet. I stand as the mouth peace of God. So a lot of people go around looking for prophets. Prophets are constantly coming forth. Amen. As the word is coming forth, prophecy is coming forth. Amen. I'm, I'm speaking as the mouthpiece of God. I don't stand in the office of a prophet, but I, I, I'm, pro I'm the God's prophet tonight. <laughs> Amen. To the glory of God. A lot of people don't know that. That's why you ain't got to go after titles. Amen. Because you, you know, I probably operate a lot of stuff I don't even know I'm operating in. Ain't about no title. Just do the work. Amen. Shoot, I probably not told y'all so many prophecies <laughs> since we've been a part of this ministry. I see somebody in the back shaking their head. Amen. I, I, I said something that came to pass. Amen. That's prophecy that came to pass. But you don't call, I'm not Prophet Bronson or Prophet Anton. I'm just Pastor Anton or Brother Anton, whatever you want to call me, because whatever God is going to use me to do, he's going to use me to do it. Amen. Today, this day and time, I run away from titles. I don't want no title because the titles have been so perverted. Amen. That's why I don't even want it to the glory of God. If, if I would be Brother Anton, but I know y'all can't take that. I'm, I'm going to be your pastor. Amen. I'm, I'm an ordained elder pastor. Amen. So I, I keep that. That's a, that's a pretty humble one. But the, I just don't. You, you understand what I'm trying to say right now. I mean, just look at all this stuff that's going on. Anton Bronson of World Harvest Centered Ministry. Perhaps you are blessed by the broadcast that you just viewed. If so, we want to hear from you. We want you to dial this number that's at the bottom of your screen right now because somebody's going to be waiting on just your call. The number is Erico 904-713-3609. Again, it's Erico 904-713-3609. Until next time, we'll be waiting to hear from you.